And if I have a good and perfect thought, I know that it originated from Jesus because in James 1.17, it says that every, not a few, but every good and perfect gift flows from the Father above, right? Before you speak, when you have received him, can he leave you? No, the Holy Spirit is always with us. Oh. He's always with, if, if you're a sinner, the Holy Spirit is still there. And so we recognize that he went to the cross, not just so that we can uh, have forgiven sins. He went to the cross so he can rec rec reconcile the world to himself. You're watching High Step TV. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You are most welcome once again to our TV, High Step TV, where we normally post men and women of God. We receive many insights in the Word of God. And today we are privileged to have a, a pastor who is a missionary. He's now in Kenya, all the way from USA. And uh, as you can see, he's, uh, uh, he's aged. <laughs> and uh, he's well educated in the Word of God. He came to teach, to be discipled by Jesus in Kenya. He normally comes, but today, we got an opportunity to sit with him and talk more about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Let me allow him to introduce himself. Very good. Good morning to everyone. If it's morning, it's evening in my world. But let me tell you, my name is Pastor Jim Williams. I'm from Bethany, Oklahoma. It's in the middle of the U.S. And I am so honored to be in Kenya. I always love coming to Kenya some of my favorite people in all the world so warm so hospitable so kind and so hungry for the word of god that's the amazing thing deal is that when i come people are very very hungry and it reminds me that that um, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness are going to be filled and so the word of god is fulfilled right here when we come together and talk about Jesus, talk about what it means to be discipled by Jesus. Good, my name is Sebastian Teofilas, I'm an evangelist as well. And uh, today I chose to discuss more about Jesus and the Holy Spirit with uh, our pastor today. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do if you love the word of God and men and the women of God as well. Yeah, I chose to discuss with this man of God uh, because I have been attending his seminars he normally does here in Kenya and even beyond that me I have attended in Kenya. Yes, and uh, I got an insight when he was teaching yesterday. He said that Jesus did not die. <laughs> For so that he can forgive people. And when he said that, I looked at him. <laughs> he was, ah, is this crazy? <laughs> or is he serious? <laughs> and then when he explained, uh, I found that Jesus was forgiving sins even before he died. So I said that I have to sit with this man. I asked him more questions uh, about that. By the way, you can you talk about that? Yeah, I love it. I would love to talk about that. Very good. We read in the Word of God several instances where, uh, let me just give you some examples. The man that was paralyzed um, and he had his four friends and they couldn't get in so they dropped him down through the roof to Jesus. And Jesus did two things. Before he healed that man, he forgave his sins. So he was forgiving sins long before he went to the cross. So we have to recognize the gospel and what the gospel says. What about, what about other stories? What about the woman caught in adultery? Neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. He's already expressing, he's already forgiving sins, even in the gospels, we read all about it. And so we recognize that he went to the cross, not just so that we can uh, have forgiven sins, he went to the cross so he can rec rec reconcile the world to himself. You and I were away from God. We were far away from God. And the only way that we could be reconciled into relationship is 
through the cross, but also in the cross, it's not just because I get forgiven of my sins, that, that's, that's just a part of the process, but he is the head and we are the body of Christ. And he as the head needs a body and he needs to infill that body with the power of the Holy Spirit so we can represent him in the world in which we live. So Jesus long before, long before he went to the garden, long before he went to the cross, he was already forgiving sins. So recognize that and understand the gospel. Yes, we recognize and receive that we have redemption and we have freedom in Christ, right? That's an incredible, incredible gift, right? Yes. But he didn't just die for us so that we could have a ticket to heaven. He died for us so that he can fill us by his Holy Spirit so that we can represent him in the world. And that's what he's calling us to do. And so that's how, I, that's my theology. You know, that's how I think. And, and that's the crux of the foundation of what I said. Now you got it. And our mission as the highest TV, by the way, is to help missionaries and uh, uh, preachers to spread the word of God uh, to the world. Because when they come like this, they can't speak to you when you are at home. But now you can hear from me. They, Another question, uh, what is the signs of the Holy Spirit and uh, how to attract them to you? Because you taught us that when you receive Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, Yes. right? Yes. Uh, but what are the signs that you have the Holy Spirit and how to attract them, those signs, to take place in your world? Well, we recognize that there's the, the gifts of the Spirit. We also recognize there's the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the ways that we recognize that we're filled with the Spirit is do we see fruit of the Spirit? Do we see love and joy and peace and patience and kindness go down the list? Is that being replicated and represented in our life? Does, do people around me see that I'm loving and I'm kind and I'm patient? All the fruits of the Spirit. And we have to understand that we have the gifts of the Spirit also. And the Holy Spirit gives those gifts as He chooses and as He wills. Now, all of us can have one of the gifts or all of the gifts, but I recognize today that the, the fruit of the Spirit is the real evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Do I have love? Do I have joy? Do I have peace? Do I have patience? Do I have kind? Does my life replicate the life of Jesus? Do you see Jesus in me? And Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, right? So I have a translation. It's my own translation for that. Yes. And I wouldn't publicize it and I wouldn't put it in the Bible, but it's it follow me as you see Christ over my shoulder. So as you see me representing Christ and the fruit of of relationship with Christ is being produced in my life those that is the evidence of the Holy Spirit and when you came to know Jesus Christ you received all the Holy Spirit you didn't just receive a junior spirit you received all of the Spirit and usually when we come to Christ we receive all the of the Holy Spirit but usually he doesn't receive all of us but we have the capacity and the ability to recognize that the Holy Spirit of the living God lives and reigns and resides in us. And oh, by the way, the same spirit that reigns in you, lives in you, is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Oops. We have power. We have to recognize and we have to walk into that truth and understanding. So all of us in our lives were so tempted to look at the circumstances of our life when Jesus says, don't look at the circumstances, keep your eyes on the truth of the Word of God. Keep your eyes on me and I'll give you life and that life more abundantly. So those are kind of the, the attract. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, signs and wonders are attracted to you, not because of who you are, but because of who lives inside of you. And that is the attraction is the Holy Spirit that reigns and lives inside of you and lives inside of me. What about the speaking in tongues? What is that? Because uh, 
Anybody who has the Holy Spirit doesn't speak in tongues. Everybody doesn't. And that's such a controversial subject. It, it is a, just a controversial subject. In the church today, it divides the church. It goes absolutely against John 17 when Jesus said that he and the Father are one and I pray that you would help us to be one like you and I are one together. So this particular issue especially has divided the church of Jesus Christ and Jesus prayed for unity. He, he prayed that we would be one just like he and the Father are one. And uh, that breaks my heart, but that is a gift of the Spirit. It is one of 12 gifts of the Spirit. It's one. It's a part of it. Do we, do we receive all the gifts of the Spirit? Or do we receive some of the gifts? The Spirit of the living God Himself is the one who gives those gifts to us as He pleases and as He chooses. I have many, many friends who have prayer language, many, many friends who speak in tongues. I pray many, many times, Jesus, if that's a gift you want me to have, if you want me to have this gift, I, I'm ready to receive it. But I'm 65 years old and I've never received that gift yet. But it's not that I'm unwilling. It's not that I say, no, no, nah, give me all the gifts but that one. That is not my heart. My determined desire is to receive everything that the Holy Spirit has for me. And so when we look at the gift of tongues and we look at it in the, in, in the Bible and we look at it in the church worldwide, that is a divisive subject. The problem is what the world needs to see is not divisiveness in the church. What the world needs to see is that we're one in Christ and that through the power of the living God, we can replicate his life everywhere we go. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 28. As you are going, go make disciples. As you're going, go. And so I'm interested not in whether you have that gift or whether you not have that gift. And people will argue with me right there. And it's okay. It's not a problem with me. I won't argue back at all because I am more concerned about making disciples. I'm going to seek the giver and I, I'm going to seek the giver and I'm not going to prioritize the gift. I'm going to seek the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, you do as you will and as you choose in my life. I just want all of you because I recognize today that without all of him in my life, and without him having all of me in my life, I don't have the kind of power that I need to represent Jesus in the world in which we live. So I want the Holy Spirit, as do you. You desire the Holy Spirit. And it might be evidenced in many different ways. It might be evidenced in the gifts of tongue. But to me, that is one of many gifts in the Spirit and we recognize today that as it's only one of many gifts, I want to see the fruit of the Spirit replicated in my life more than anything else. So I'm seeking the giver. I'm not seeking the gift. And if the gift comes, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. If the gift doesn't come, I'm not offended. I'm not upset. It does not matter because I know the Holy Spirit is sovereign in my life and he fills me full and completely so I can proclaim the good news of the gospel everywhere I go because that he said, as he said, as you are going, make disciples. I hope you are running uh, and you are getting a lot of insights from our pastor. And according to your age and your education and your experience, allow me to ask so many questions about Holy Spirit. Yes. I see on TVs, social media, in the churches, live, uh, people praying for each other and they fall down. And yes. when you ask some people, they tell you that these people are falling down because they are filled by the Holy Spirit. Other people tell you that they are being delivered. Other people say that uh, those people have demons, so demons were running away from them. 
Oh. <laughs> that sign of falling down, according to you, what is that? Okay, well, the, the technical term is being slain in the spirit, okay? And when I was growing up, that was not a part of my community of faith. I never seen anybody slain in the spirit. As a matter of fact, I had a barrier towards that. I just thought it was not authentic. It was not, it was fake. It was, it was something that I didn't experience at all. And I said at one time in my life, up till the year of 2016, that'll never happen to me. Never once will it happen to me. It might happen to somebody else, but it won't happen to me. And one day I was on sabbatical and I was traveling to, and my only churches that I went to were church, churches that were built on prayer. So I was on my sabbatical and I was at a church service and the founder of our organization was there and I was down praying at the altar with different people and I was enjoying my time and my, uh, the founder of our ministry, Dan Bohai, said, Jimmy, come over here. I wasn't expecting anything. Other people had fallen out in the spirit already and I just, I didn't expect anything. And he said, I want to pray for your diabetes. And he put his hand on my head and I fell out in the spirit. I was the guy, I was the guy who said, that's not happening to me. It's on, it's not authentic. But that day, something changed. That day I was down and I was aware and conscious of everything, but it was like a magnet was pulling me to the floor. I couldn't move. I couldn't move and it was amazing, amazing thing. And really it's never happened again. But I want you to understand that it is a reality. I recognize that these gifts can be abused. And I know that that's one of the big issues is the abuse of that gift. But all I know is I can give you my testimony of what happened to me. So that happened to me. I have prayed over so many people. I've laid hands on so many people. I've prayed prayers of impartation over so many people. And not one person has fell out in the spirit until last year. We were in a healing and deliverance conference and our founder was talking about when we experience certain things, we receive an anointing to pray for that. For instance, I believe I have an anointing to pray for people that have strokes that can't walk, that are paralyzed, because I myself was in that condition. And so I believe that the Lord has given me anointing because I myself have experienced that. Well, he was talking about being delivered from fear. Well, many, many years ago, I was delivered from fear and it was, it was powerful and it changed my life. I don't fear anymore. And in that moment, I was delivered from fear and he said, you know, I, I want Jimmy to lay hands on you because I was there when I saw him delivered from fear. Mm -hmm. And he's not been fearful again, not at all. I went to Pakistan last week. I wasn't fearful. I had guns all around me. I wasn't fearful. God delivered me from the spirit of fear. And so he was calling people up front to be delivered from the spirit of fear. And he said, I want Jimmy just to go quickly and lay hands on you and pray over you and go to the next one. There was probably 40 people there lined up to be delivered from fear because I believe that I experienced, I experienced a deliverance from fear and I have anointing. And, and Dan agreed with me that, that there's anointing. I laid my hands on the first person, just prayed deliverance of fear. I barely touched the second person and down they went. And then the next one down they went. I was shocked because it's never happened to me before. It might never happen again. It doesn't matter. I am not seeking 
that kind of demonstration for me. The only thing I care about is the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit on people's life to deliver them from whatever is binding them. Because Jesus himself through the power of the Spirit is the chain breaker. I was grateful for the experience, but it's Jesus <laughs> through the Spirit. It's him, it's all him, it's not me. And so there's still people today that would be like I was before that happened to me. It happened to me, I experienced it, I can't explain it, I don't understand it, I'm sorry, I've had a lot of theological training, but I don't understand what happened. Wow. I don't happen, I don't understand. Okay, so in short, that is the sign of the Holy Spirit. It is not a demon or someone when uh, the demons are getting out from people, they can also fall in the same way or well, what, what I see is even in that same setting that I was in, people were delivered from possession of demons there. And that's what deliverance is all about. We can be oppressed, we can be possessed, of, uh, but I want you to know that you and, my, you and me, as believers, as sons of the Most High God, I don't believe that those that hearts are fully set on him can ever be delivered. Remember Colossians 3.15, right? It says that Jesus descended into hell and he stripped the enemy of every weapon that he has. So today, the good news is Satan has no weapon. There's nothing, the word of God says, no weapon can be formed against you. Satan has no weapon. He's stripped naked. He doesn't have anything. The only thing he has is the power that you give him. That's the only thing he has. He has no power over you. And we have to recognize and realize that some live in fear of Satan, but the word of God clearly dis declares that he's been stripped of every power, every every weapon that he has. And so we recognize today that we not we need not live in fear and we don't need to live outside of the truth of, of the word of God. The word of God, Theo, says this, that the Satan, the enemy, he's been stripped of every weapon and he has no power and that's how I'm going to live. I'm gonna walk in that truth because I'm not gonna look at my circumstances, I'm gonna live by the truth of the word of God. Good. Good, I hope you are getting insights from our pastor and please you can uh, make your comment or write what you are learning from our pastor. And the next question is, many people struggle to discern the voice of God and uh, to know if that is God speaking, if it is the mind hearings, or if it is the devil, how can you discern the voice of God? That's one of my favorite questions in all the world. Good. I'm glad that you asked that question. Here's what I believe. I believe that there's that Jesus has a voice. Yes. He speaks yes, yes. and there's life in his voice. Mm -hmm. And so there's three specific ways that I hear Jesus speak. First of all, he speaks through his word. He speaks through the word of God, the Bible. It, the Bible is a love letter that was written specifically to you and specifically to me. And Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, speaks through the word of God. So I personalize the word of God. When I open the word of God, Jesus, what do you want to say to me? I'm going to read and I'm going to personalize. So I'm, I'm, I know that through the word of God specifically and many, many times he speaks to us through the word of God. He speaks to us by his spirit. You have a spirit, I have a spirit. And when I asked Jesus Christ into my, my, my heart, my spirit was united with the spirit of God. So now it's one and I want you to know there's only one thing that is perfect in my life, and that's my spirit, not because of me, but because I've been made one, united with Christ. And so his spirit is perfect. So his spirit speaks to my spirit, right? His spirit. Remember, the word of God reminds us 
that it's through his word he confirms that we're sons and daughters of God. It's by his, he speaks to my spirit and tells me, oh, by the way, you have privilege. You're a son of the most high God. And so we recognize that. So by the word he speaks, by the spirit he speaks, and through the body he speaks. There are many, many times that Jesus wants to speak through the body. So if I hear a word from Jesus and he speaks to me and he asks me to share that word with others, then I speak the very words that I hear from Jesus and I deliver them as an obedient servant of God. Then what I've just done is I've just prophesied because I've spoken the very words of God. And the Bible says that we all are to speak the very words of God. So we have to recognize and realize today that all the prophecy is not mysterious. Prophecy basically, fundamentally and foundationally is Jesus speaks to me. And he says, now I want you to go deliver that word to somebody. And when I speak it, I hear those words and I speak the very words that he speaks, then at that moment, that's prof prophetic. It's prophetic because we're to speak the very words of God. And we have to be careful about how we speak, right? Yes. You're either going to bring speak words of life or you're gonna speak words of death. There's no middle ground here. You're speaking words of life or you're speaking words of death. And I wanna speak words of life and his words are life to me. So that's, that's, that's what I believe. I, I, I believe that, that he speaks to me three times. Oh, by the way, also, he, it, it, John, James 1.17 says every good and perfect gift. Well, if I have a good and perfect thought, every good and perfect, every, underline every, every good and perfect gift. And if I have a good and perfect thought, I know that it originated from Jesus because in James 1.17, it says that every, not a few, but every good and perfect gift flows from the Father above, right? So if I have a good thought, a good thought, then I know that it originated. And so many times I test myself. That's why 2 Corinthians says that we're to take every thought captive and make it obedient to the truth of the word of God, obedient to Christ. We test every thought because every good and perfect thought originated in the heart of God. Wow, wow, wow. I didn't know to that, but from today, now I understand. Uh, my next question is that uh, the Holy Spirit, when you have received him, can he leave you? No, the Holy Spirit is always with us. Oh. He's always with, if, if you're a sinner, the Holy Spirit is still there. He's not gonna, why do I believe that? Why would I make a bold statement like that, that the Holy Spirit never leaves us? He never leaves us at all. Why? Because the word of God says that he himself is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And if he leaves you, he doesn't speak. Now, what you can do is you can block, you can push him away. You cannot receive what he wants to give. You cannot receive the free gift that he wants to give to you. So you can push him away. You can reject him. And we recognize and understand in the word of God that you can reject him so much that your heart becomes so callous that you can't hear him anymore. But he's not, he, he hasn't left. He hasn't left, but I can reject him and reject him and reject him reject him and push him away and push him away and that's the unpardonable sin that's the unpardonable sin it's not that Jesus is not willing at all that you come to repentance or that he can forgive you because what Jesus did on the cross is complete it's full there's no other sacrifice that has to be made what Jesus did on the cross is enough for every one of us and I can reject him and reject him and reject him but he's still willing because he, of what he's already done in, in his crucifixion and what he's done in shedding of his blood so that we can have life and that life more eternal. But the unpardonable sin is not that, oh, you, can, you, you, you committed a sin that Jesus will never forget. 
I mean, never forgive. That's not true. If we know the theology and the understanding of what happened on the cross, it was all, once and for all. He doesn't have to be crucified again. He's, cruci he's been crucified so that our sins can be forgiven, but I can continue to reject and reject and reject and reject till my heart becomes so callous that I don't hear him anymore. Uh -huh. And that's the issue. Another thing came in my mind. It wasn't prepared to us, but Bible says that uh, any sin can be forgiven unless to insult or to abuse the Holy Spirit. I don't know different versions how they, but it is in that right. What that's mean? That's what I'm speaking about. Okay, I can choose not to listen. I can choose not to repent. I can choose not to believe. I can choose to walk away. I can choose that, all of those things. Why? Because God gave us a choice. He gave us a choice. Because authentic love, authentic love, basically, as we understand it, if I'm gonna love authentically, I want to love because they choose to love me, not because I force them to love me. Okay. Good. So you, you can, you you can be so um, calloused to the spirit of the living God that you can push him away and push him away. He's still speaking. He's still. He's not willing that any should perish. We either believe the Word of God or we don't believe the Word of God. He's not willing. That's what the Word says. He's not willing. So He's going to woo and pull and, and draw us to Himself. He's going to continue to do that. But if I continue to push Him away, it's not because Jesus wants to be pushed away. It's because you determine to push Him away. And then at that moment, there will be some time in your life that you might, if you just continue to be so callous and so angry and not believe who God is, that you can push him so far away that you don't hear him anymore because your heart is so closed and it's so callous. But that does not mean he never gives up. He, he never, ever gives up on one person. Wow. He won't. That's why if we're going to become like Christ, we should never give up on one person. Good. Every person... So when you walk down the street, Theo, and you make eye contact with somebody, mm -hmm. you should always remember that person is so loved by God that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for. And I don't care. I don't care. Remember Ephesians 6, 12. Our, our struggle, our wrestle, wrestle match, our battle is not against flesh and blood. People are not our enemies. They're not our enemies. People are not our enemies. The enemy is those that have influenced the principalities and the powers of darkness that have influenced and they influence that person's proclivity so that, so that they are not being, it's not the person. It's what's influencing them, the principality. So if you're gonna get upset and be angry and hate your enemy, then I'll tell you who to hate. Hate Satan himself. Hate all the demons there because they're the ones that are influencing that person. It's not the person. It's not the person. Our battle, it, again, I come back, Theo. You either believe the Word of God or you don't. And the Word of God says our battle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So people are not our enemy. People are not our problem. We blame people all the time. Well, they did this and they did this and they did this and they did this. They've been influenced by powers of darkness. They've been influenced. And if we want to get upset, get upset with the powers of darkness. Don't get upset with that person because they're influenced. And those influence um, begin to speak to their proclivities, their weaknesses and all that. And they're influenced and what they do is influenced by the powers of darkness. So that person isn't your enemy. It's what they're being influenced by that's your enemy. We have to understand that. If we don't, if we don't, then we'll hate people, we'll hate. The vilest person on earth is not our enemy. It's what influences them.
that becomes our enemy. Well, I hope now you understand that if you have received Jesus Christ, even now, then later you must right? The Holy Spirit is still with you. That voice you hear every day telling you to come back, to repent, to come back to Jesus, there is the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much for that. But uh, since you are going back to America, allow me to ask you more questions. Uh, related to education. Yes. I know in America you don't have so much problems in education. And uh, uh, it is easy for you to raise your children and to recognize what they will become and help children to, to, to achieve whatever they want to be whoever they want to become, you do that. And here in Africa, we have a big problem where a person can grow and reach like my age without knowing his purpose in life. And um, suddenly, that person, you find that they are being called to serve God. Now, my, uh, I want you to tell us more about uh, call for God without education. <laughs> we have many pastors. I'm asking because of uh, some pastors who have churches. Yes. They are not educated. They yes. are relying on the call that God has yes. called them. What is your take on that and what can we say? I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because here's what I believe. First of all, um, a call can never be taken back. And for me, um, I remember when I was called. I remember the day, I remember the moment, I remember the time, and I remember the place. And I'm there right now. I can see it right now. Yes. So call is very important because um, I, I, like the children of Israel, when God delivered them, they built altars to remember, not to worship, but to remember, right? Yes. And that moment in my life, I, in my mind and in my spirit, built an altar at that very location. I can still take you to the place. I live in the same city. I know exactly where it was. And I can take you to that place and I can show you that this is the place that God called me. He called me. Mm -hmm. And what that does for me is that when I'm struggling, when I when I want to quit, you don't want to quit, I know that, but I sometimes I have a problem about that. But I can go to that place. I can go back to that place of remembrance and say, God spoke to me, and this is what he said. And so I get resolved and I stand back up and I'm standing straight and I'm standing strong and it doesn't matter what um, comes at me, I know I was called. So the call for the pastor is very, very important, but the education is very, very important also. Here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. When Jesus said, that, hey guys, I'm going away. I'm gonna have to go. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I want you to know it's to your advantage that I go. For if I do not go, the Holy Spirit will not come. And what did he say next? What, what, did, what did Jesus say next to his disciples? which is a personal word for you and me as well. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll teach you everything I have said. He'll help us remember, he'll teach us. And so if I don't have an education and I can't get an education because of whatever economic or whatever issues or location it is, I want you to know that we have the best teacher of them all. And that is Jesus said, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit 
and he'll teach you everything that I have said. And he's laboring in his harvest field. I want to encourage you that you have the Holy Spirit. If you don't have anything else, you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, according to Jesus' words, and again, do we believe the Bible or do we not believe the Bible, says that he'll teach you and remind you of everything I've said. And so today, if you don't have a formal education, you're, you're, you have a great teacher, and that teacher is the Holy Spirit. And you have power, and you have anointing, and you have grace to declare the good news of the gospel because the Holy Spirit will teach you. And I recognize today, I live in a country where there is access to education. I live in a country where I can, I don't even need books anymore, I just Google it. And I get information and all of that. I have all of that at my, at my disposal. So do you know what? There's greater accountability on me than the pastor who has no education, only relying on the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you today, if you don't hear anything else I say, pastor, hear this. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the greatest teacher of all teachers. He's amazing. He's amazing. And if you'll ask him, he'll teach you. So be inquisitive, ask questions of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will be faithful to teach you. I can't solve all the problems in the world, but I do know we have the Holy Spirit and I count on the Holy Spirit, even with the education that I have. Yes, I know you have many questions that you can uh, ask in our comments or if you have an opportunity to sit with him. But please, you can write them down in the comments. Maybe when he comes back, or if we get another person to answer those questions, we can uh, reach out for you. Uh, but this one, I don't want to include it. That is, uh, I want your advice. Here we preach the gospel and the people get saved. But here there is a person who understood Jesus, who be I don't know if I can say that he believed, but he knows about Jesus. But this person uh, he is or she is seeming knowing because of a situation. Do you remember the story of, uh, of Esau and Jacob? Mm -hmm. uh, when he came from hunting, he didn't have anything. All he had, it was um, uh, his right back. Yes. And uh, he had to sell that to his brother so that he can survive tomorrow mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, his, his view or his sight could say that if he's not going to eat that stew and live tomorrow he will, he will die and live the right back. Mm -hmm. We have people who are there. We have people who are living uh, as a prostitutes and uh, yeah, some people are like that because uh, they want to pay their adults, they want to pay for school fees of their child. When you tell that person about Jesus, tells you, I know, I know about Jesus, but um, uh, if I don't do that, I can't pay my bills. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know very well that there is heaven and hell. And by doing so, I know I will go to hell. And the person, you lack words to tell such person. What is your advice or what can you say? Because I have seen that. You ask a very difficult question. Very, very, very difficult. Very. <laughs> with very difficult and complicated answers to that. Can I simplify? 
just because the answer is too long for the time that we have Mm -hmm. the answer is way too long Mm -hmm. first of all i'm going to stand on the truth of the word of god yes we today have a sin consciousness or we have a sun consciousness and many today have a sin consciousness that i'll never measure up my performance is not good enough I'm at the low end cast of society. I'm not worth anything. We have that consciousness in our lives. I've sinned too much. I've gone way too far away. We have a sin consciousness and it dominates us. That's the scheme of the enemy. And yet I recognize today, I recognize today that I have a son conscious and that is S-O-N, son of Christ conscious which means that I'm a child of the King and I have the word of God. So simplify it for me. It's this, my God, my God. That means it's personal. I didn't say our God. Mm -hmm. I said, my God, I have made it so personal that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to stand on the truth of the word of God. And I'm, my eyes say impossible, impossible. You have to feed your family. You have, I get it. This is the world, the, the devastated world that we live in. But my physical eyes see impossibility, but my spiritual eyes see the truth of the word of God. So that's a very simplistic answer. What did it say in the Old Testament? I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. Now, if we looked at in that in our physical eyes, we would say that's not true. But we have to understand the the context of that statement. The context of that statement is a faith statement. It's declaring that God is good and God is our provision. And that's what they're doing there selling birthrights, as a matter of fact. What happened? The birthright was sold, right? Yes. But did God destroy? He didn't destroy Esau. He didn't destroy, he didn't destroy him. What did he do? He blessed him. There was reconciliation in relationship. He was blessed abundantly. Now we recognize that historically, we see even today the uh, outcome of that issue. In the Middle East, we still see it today. But both were blessed abundantly. Both were reconciled with God. And so we have to rec- we have to understand that even though we sell our birthright, even though we give it away, whatever it is, there can still be reconciliation. And we have to recognize Jesus, the world is in deep need. It needs so many things, so many things. I declare that you're my provision. I declare that you're the provision of your creation itself. And I want you to understand that people are influenced by the kingdom of darkness. And because of the team of darkness, there's evil, there's greed, there's all kinds of things, storing up things for ourselves. So people are in need, people are in need. And so for me, I, I can't go everywhere and I can't make a difference everywhere. But I have a story to tell you, okay? Yes. I'm sure you've heard the story. It's the story of the starfish. A man was walking along the beach. And there was another man a, a distance away watching this man and he would bend down and he'd pick something up and he'd throw it in the ocean. And then he'd go bend down again and he'd pick it up and he'd throw it in the ocean. And The man that was a distance away was so curious about what he was doing, so he thought he would make his way down to the man to see what he's doing. And all he would see is the man would take a step, reach down, throw something in the ocean, 
take another step, reach down, throw something in the ocean, right? And so he got closer and closer and closer and he saw what he was doing. There was thousands of starfish on the beach stranded. And so he went up to the man and he said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm saving starfish. And he said, there's so many starfish on the beach. There is no way that you can save these starfish. And he paused and he reached down and he picked up another one, showed the man. And then he threw it, threw it in the ocean and he said, I made a difference in that one. And if all of us today would make a difference in just one, we can make a huge impact in the world in which we live. If we could just do that, I don't have answers. I'm not smart enough, but I do know the word of God said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and he'll give you that wisdom and he'll not, he'll not find any fault. Meaning that if I'm not righteous, if I ask for wisdom, Jesus is ready and willing to give me the wisdom that I need. So I understand that I'm going to look, that's what I do. I came to Africa, I came to Kenya, I can go to Tanzania, and I recognize that people all around the world need clean water. They deserve clean water, but there's villages with disease, villages that never have heard the name of Jesus. And what God's called, one of the things that God's called me to do is I can't go to every village in the world, but I can go to one and I can assess and I can go back and I can provide resource to drill a water well so that children have clean water, that men and women have clean water, that they don't have to die as young people, they don't have to be diseased and live with disease, that we can make a difference and that's what I'm determined to do. So I can't make a difference, difficult question, difficult issues, <laughs> but I do know this, I can make a difference in one village. And so far last year, I made a difference in 32. No, I didn't make a difference at all. My, my vocabulary is wrong. Jesus made a difference in 32 villages just last year. Wow. Just last year alone. <laughs> That's good. There's hundreds and thousands of villages. But for 32 villages, they have clean water. They have been given living water by the declaration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And children are saved today and they're not dying because they drink clean, pure water. And so I don't have an answer for the big question, <laughs> but I do have an answer for one village yes. that I can walk in and not me. They don't see me. They see Jesus walking into their village and providing and meeting their need. You see, an empty stomach is a closed ear that cannot be, it's a deaf ear. Mm -hmm. So if we meet their need and their stomach becomes full, their ears become open yes. to the living water and the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Sure, sure. That's what I'm determined to do. Sure. So I can't do it all. Never will attempt to do it all. Mm -hmm. But I do know with the if I can go and raise resource mm -hmm. to make a difference in one child, then I am, they see Jesus. I don't want them to see me. I want them to see Jesus so the word becomes flesh and dwells among them because Jesus lives inside of me. So they see him, they don't see me. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I hope you have learned that lot. And uh, we have so many things that we can ask, but uh, for because of the interest of time, let us just <laughs> allow him to, to go and prepare for the next uh, journey that he's having to Tanzania. And uh, please write your question there. I will be always there to find men like uh, him kind of God and when he comes back still we will have a talk and ask more Amen. other questions and if you are there you have not yet received Jesus Christ this is a good time for you he's going to pray for you wherever you are if you are sick if you have uh, you are going through any difficult moment 
this is the right time. Uh, don't assume that it's online. There is power of God, Amen. which is still working until now. Just the way you are watching is the same way you read your Bible and you believe it was written so many years ago and you can receive your miracle now. I'm going to allow Pastor Jim to oh, make an altar call. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, you can yeah, have so, one it, it, it's, and pray for people and uh, just. Uh, I, I, I want to do that for sure. <laughs> so, Jesus, your word declares that today is the day of salvation. And the good news is, Jesus, that you have walked, you, you, you are with every person that's viewing this right now. You're present in their life. And if they don't know you, Jesus, they can know you right now. They can receive you as their personal savior. You can redeem them, Lord, and you can set them on a strong foundation. So I pray, Jesus, right now, I send your word of salvation right now to every person that's listening that does not know you, Lord, right now, Jesus, I pray that they would just talk to you, recognize and say, Lord, that you are Jesus. You're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God, and you've come to redeem them. So allow them, Lord, to just talk to you like we're talking together, Lord. Talk to you about asking you into their heart. Let them say, Lord, specifically, forgive my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness that I can be a new creation in Christ. And Lord, I know that it's your idea to heal. I know it's your idea. I don't have to pray if it's your will, it's your ideal idea and you wanna heal. So Lord, I send your healing word to every person right now in the name of Jesus. And whatever it is right now, whether it's a shoulder or a knee or intestines or a confusion or brain aneurysm or cancer or whatever it is, if it's paralysis, Lord, you delivered me, Lord, and I was in a wheelchair one day and I walked today in the name of Jesus, so I send your word and I send your anointing on every person, Lord, that has disease and illness today I pray, spirit of infirmity, be gone in the name of Jesus. Spirit of confusion, be gone in the name of Jesus because you reminded us that by your stripes we are healed. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, Lord, by your stripes, what you did on the cross and the price you pray, paid, Lord, is enough. Nothing else needs to be done. So we cover each person by the blood of Jesus Christ and we send your powerful word and the anointing of your spirit. Raise them up right now. If they're in a wheelchair, rise and walk in the name of Jesus and we give you praise and honor and glory in Christ's name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very You're much welcome. for your time, for the prayers. And I believe that uh, someone out there is has received this. Amen. Miracle. I believe it. Yes, yes. So keep um, supporting us, watching our uh, our videos. They are always for gospel preachings and praying for people. May God bless you so much. See you next time. We love you.